Hello, I'm Nicholas Fernandez. I'm a computational scientist at the Human Immune Monitoring Center at Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And this video is going to walk you through a dashboard we built using uh, Jupyter Notebooks and a, a library called Voila to explore um, spatial transcriptomics data from uh, 10x genomics using a platform called Visium. So this dashboard uh, contains two um, interactive visuals that are linked to one another and enable you to, to uh, interactively explore high dimensional gene expression data along with uh, spatial um, data. So on the left, we have a view of a mouse brain um, from a publicly available data set. Um, and each spot shows you a, a region that was assayed uh, in that mouse brain. And in total, there are about um, two and a half thousand spots that, um, that are measured in this uh, visual. So if we hover over a spot, it'll go ahead and highlight the spots that are predicted to be the same cell type. And then um, on the right, we have a, a heat map representation of the same data. So we have those same two and a half thousand spots across uh, columns. So we have our, our data points, our spots as columns, and our genes as rows. And we've um, gone ahead and hierarchically clustered our data points and our genes. And the genes, um, we're looking at the top 250 variable genes in this data set. And we've gone ahead and z-scored them. So this allows us to, to get two complementary views of the data. And this uh, tutorial is going to walk you through like how you can you can use this to explore the relationship between these, these complementary views. So, so on the right here, um, if we click on a cell type uh, category, we can go ahead and see where the cell types are, um, are located in the brain. So we can see there's pretty good correlation between our prediction of cell type and actual spatial location here. Um, and then the description of how we, we did the prediction, it can be found down here and in the GitHub repository. Um, but similarly to the um, Surat spatial uh, vignette, we went ahead and used a, a reference data set from the Allen Institute, um, generated signatures from that data set, and then used those signatures to predict tentative cell type for our Visium spots. And we see that um, at a pretty high level, we're getting some um, what, what seem to be like reasonable cell type predictions and, and locations. So, um, so what's powerful about this heat map is that you can go ahead and start to interpret why particular data points are clustering near each other. So if you look over here on the right, uh, this cell type here, um, so all these cells are kind of located in this bottom right quadrant of the tissue. So you can go and zoom in and start to understand why they're clustering near each other, at least in terms of gene expression. And um, so now you can see specifically um, which genes are up and down regulated. So you can see all these genes in red. So if you click on a gene, once a gene name shows up, so you click, then you can see the expression of that gene. And if you compare it to where these cells are located, you see that these genes, as expected, are going to be showing high expression in that bottom right quadrant. So you can click different genes, and um, and because they are because we we've clustered the genes as rows, the genes that are nearby each other are going to um, uh, show uh, some degree of spatial correlation for the most part. So we can start to understand um, which genes are involved in in um, certain cell type um, identification. We can click here. We can uh, actually export these genes if we want and take them to a different tool. Um, so we can zoom out. And then what's nice is that we can also um, so this this top cell type prediction can be thought of as a prior knowledge prediction because we're using outside knowledge. But you can also perform unbiased hierarchical clustering and use a, a more data-driven approach. So here we have an interactive dendrogram that lets you find clusters of different um, size. So if you go to the left, you find larger clusters. And if you move to the right, you get smaller clusters. So if you click the dendrogram here, like we did before, then you can see that this cluster is primarily composed of this particular SST cell type. And um, we can see exactly where those cells are. But if we want to look a bit more granularly, um, we could keep whittling away at that cluster, find the, the sort of more um, similar cell types, and you see that those form a really nice actual spatial cluster. Right? But um, you can also say, OK, what are the really, really broad cell types like if you or clustering of these data points? If you just had to pick two clusters, what would they look like? And now you'd see that you have this cluster here and this large cluster. And then you can break that down again so you can say, Give me five data-driven clusters and see one, two, three, four, five. So these, what's what's really nice is that these data-driven clusters that are all based in the high-dimensional gene expression space really nicely correlate with spatial um, expression. So here you can see that all of these cells sort of fall into this nodule here, and then you can find more granular sections within here, say here, and then click and see particular cell types there. Um, and then what's nice also, it, like we were showing before, that we can overly uh, particular expression of a gene. Um, let's go ahead and pick a gene here. So we overlay this APOD gene. We can see here uh, the expression of the gene in those in those spots. But 
Um, so now we we also want to want to be able to um, show a dimensionality reduced view since this is uh, how this data is generally shown. So if we we built a, um, a transformation where you can click the UMAP button and it will animate your spots and change them from the location based view into the UMAP view. So now you can see the expression of the genes in um, dimensionality reduced space and you can see how they relate, like where those where those uh, tissues those spots came from in the actual tissue and where they are being projected onto dimension I reduced space. And this UMAP was run on the same uh, 250 variable genes. So what this, this kind of helps show from a uh, data visualization standpoint is that we're, um, is that you can kind of think of a, um, a UMAP and a heat map as uh, very closely related. So you can think of like a one UMAP is effectively like a rearrangement of a one row in a heat map. So heat maps allowing you to see lots and lots of different dimensions all at once. And if you want to see them in a, in a bit, uh, a little bit more spatially informative view, you can uh, project them into a UMAP. So one gene that looks pretty nice is this PTGDS. So if you click here, it forms this kind of like spiral, looks astral sort of pattern here in the UMAP. And then if you transition to tissue location, you see that it transitions and it's highly expressed around the periphery of these cells. Um, so it's a pretty fun tool to play with. And um, there's a lot that can be done to um, to ex explore the data in this in this format, we're working on a lot of different um, other interactive components, and um, and uh, we're happy to hear your feedback. And uh, we hope you enjoy the tool. All right, thank you.